Now, without further ado, let us start with our third session on the fight against tax avoidance and tax fraud. I welcome my co-chair, Hans Michelbach, member of the German Bundestag. I also welcome Commissioner Moscovici. Thank you very much for having joined us. You made it on time after a very early flight. You had to get up early this morning, but you arrived on time. And I also welcome our State Secretary at the Federal Ministry of Finance, Herbert Fuchs. A cordial welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, let us get down to work immediately, and I give the floor to Commissioner Moscovici. Hello, good morning, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, members of Parliament, Secretary of State. It's a great pleasure to be here today in this room that I start to know quite well because I was here just about 10 days ago for the Eurogroup and the informal COFIN meetings that um, went very well under the Austrian presidency. Um, and the uh, Commission um, cooperates very well with the Austrian presidency. The conditions are great. Um, progress has been made. And um, with the digital um, uh, taxation, um, great progress has been made. So it's uh, wonderful to be here to talk about um, tax fraud and tax evasion, a question that is at the heart of the program of the European Union. What we want is a more level playing field, a more fair taxation for our citizens, but also for enterprises in our single market. It's been four years now that uh, I've been in my uh, position as commissioner in charge of um, taxation, fair and just taxation. That is the great priority. Why? Because that does, of course, have an impact on the economic stability, prosperity of um, enterprises, social cohesion. And we know that now that there is a global public opinion that um, rejects the old uh, practices of tax fraud and tax evasion. Um, level playing field, that means that every taxpayer, and when I say taxpayer, I mean uh, companies and um, individuals, rich or not so rich, needs to pay the right taxes at the right place. In the case of companies, that is, of course, of great significance, to have to pay the taxes where the profits are generated, which is, of course, sometimes um, hard to determine in the world of today, a world where um, the economy has been dematerialized to a great extent and where it's sometimes very hard to um, identify the profit centers and decision-making centers. Um, but, but this... Um, one thing that I'd like to underscore is that the work that we are doing in order to provide a level playing field um, is something that is at the heart of expectations of the European public. In a Eurobarometer study in 2016, two years ago, three-fourths of the respondents said that the fight against tax fraud and tax evasion was one of the should be one of the main priorities of the European Union. So a lot of resources and a lot of energy has been invested in um, getting this on the way, and I'm proud to say that we have made progress in close cooperation with the European Parliament and the member states. So first of all, a, a new solid framework for tr fiscal transparency uh, was established, tr a transparency revolution. Uh, member states um, um, had to to change some tools and how they provide information about uh, uh, tax revenues, the log slicks, um, because there was a very opaque situation in the past. 
and um, the country by country reporting, um, which is going to be made public, that is to say accessible to everyone, and also uh, fight against money laundering, uh, on um, aggressive tax planning, and uh, what directive has been adopted by the Council and by the European Parliament, which is going to impose on all intermediaries like law firms, um, uh, tax advisors, to make sure that everything is very transparent and to make it transparent um, how aggressive the tax planning is that they sell to their clients. So more cooperation, more efficient cooperation between the fiscal authorities of the member states, and that will, of course, improve the capacities, their capacities to target um, wrongdoers. So that was the first axis of intervention. Then uh, we strengthened our common defenses against aggressive tax planning with the um, uh, anti ATA, the Anti-Tax Avoidance Directive 1 and 2. Now the member states have new, a new rule book in order to be able to fight against some of the most current forms of aggressive tax planning. This type of regulation offers a minimum level of protection against the tax evasion and makes sure that the anti-abuse rules are applied in a coherent manner in the entire European Union. And those directives um, uh, lead to um, improved transposition because we think that the EU must be a leader in this area. Uh, and uh, we are a um, front runner, if you like, for similar rules for the G20 and the WTO. Third um, focus area, we try to simplify the VAT rules so that they are more resilient. There is VAT, VAT fraud that you all know, that everyone knows. That is the carousel um, VAT fraud um, that makes use of the uh, lack of heterogeneity between um, the individual states. 50 billion euro by, per year are lost because of this type of VAT fraud. Fraudulent um, undertakings uh, benefit from uh, differences and from transitory rules. Um, and if um, a system has very old rules that um, dates back to the beginning of the 20th century, uh, the big gaps are left open. So this has to be stopped. And this is why I have proposed a fundamental reform of the VAT system of the European Union that allows to uh, reduce 80% um, of the cross-border fraud. And it's very important that cross-border um, transactions need to be treated in the same way as domestic transactions. This reform is still um, on the table of the Council. So, uh, so one company um, should not be able to collect millions of euros and then disappear without any traces if it had never existed. Uh, and in order to eliminate that, we have to create a more level playing field. And this uh, proposal of the uh, com Commission that is very robust and makes us advance because in the Commission, and another point uh, of our positive track record is to have a more just um, tax rules also outside of the European Union. In the case of the G20, and this was just a few weeks ago that we met in Buenos Aires. So the first list of the European Union of non-cooperating countries, the list of tax havens has been published for countries that reject the good governance in tax matters. I know that the list is not perfect. I know that there are certain challenges and criticisms. But for me, it is a first historical step forward. 
and it also convinced uh, more than 300 countries in the whole world to um, concentrate on improving their own tax systems and their governance rules. If they do, don't do that in the right deadlines, they risk to be listed on the blacklist with all the consequences. So yes, the list that the, there are only nine countries on the blacklist, but what it is important is the gray list with the 25, country, 25 countries who have um, made commitments, and if they don't comply with them, they risk to come onto the blacklist. But if they uh, comply with their commitments, they will be delisted. So it's the process um, that is going to motivate the countries. We are, of course, closely observing progress made. Um, we have to be firm um, if uh, there are jurisdictions that do not comply with their commitments in the right deadlines. We know that third countries um, um, will decide whether they will honor their commitments and it will be um, essential. So you, members of parliament, will have an essential role to play because you have a role in uh, controlling the activities of the governments. And it, it will be important that all governments uh, impose real solid sanctions against any countries that rejects uh, its commitments. Otherwise, we will never arrive at a more just tax system. It's not about um, uh, just making us happy, but it's about the fact that we have done more in the last four years to make progress than in the years before. So, but there is a lot of work still to be done. Um, Mr. Juncker said that the Commission made its homework and has made all the proposals, and now they have to be adopted and implemented by the Member States, that is to say by you. And there are three focus areas. First of all, tax reform of um, corporate taxes, the most ambitious reform ever presented, that is the corporate co consolidated tax base. And it's going to be the basis of a modern, competitive and just tax system. It will make Europe a more attractive for investment and it will simplify um, things, it will uh, reduce costs, and it will favor growth. So it is going to make the European Union a, a fair tax um, continent by um, avoiding any illegal profit transfer and making sure that everybody works in the same unified tax system. For this is necessary in order to keep up public morale. I know that it's a very um, complex, sensitive and very political undertaking. This is why we should make any effort to find a compromise that works for everyone. And I think it is the solution for the future is the um, tax system, the corporate tax system of the 21st system. And um, if that is going to be blocked in the Council, that we are blocking our way into the future. Because uh, the corporate tax system was made 100 years ago for companies that were placed physically in the same country where, they, where the profits were made. This is no longer the case. So if we want a more just system, we cannot ignore the question of digital taxation. Again, this is a very sensitive um, area in the U Union and internationally, because in, our rules are obsolete and cannot take into account the dynamic de new developments in the world of the digital, the dematerializ dematerialization that we see every day. And then there is this scandal, which is also a paradox, meaning that profits are of the digital um, service providers, the biggest corp corporations in the world, are hardly ever taxed in the European Union, even if the companies are very active in these countries and generate huge profits. We know that we are the richest economic area in the world. We have a very high purchasing power, but this situation is a real threat because it means a loss of public resources and it um, distorts competition. 
and it um, erodes one of the most fundamental principles of a just taxation system. So two proposals that are major in order to have um, a just level playing field. First of all, all the rules of the uh, digital presence, which what we uh, tax today is the physical presence, but uh, not all companies do have a physical presence, so we have to tax a digital presence. And then e-media uh, have to be taxed for certain activities. And it was in this room that we talked about it 10 days ago, and I, and I was very happy to see that um, serious progress was made under the um, Austrian presidency. And I'm full of hope, and I think that we are, will be able to adopt this second proposal before the end of the um, Austrian presidency. This is not um, a battle against um, digital service providers. It's just to be up to the challenges of our time. And digitalization is a great opportunity for Europe, but we have to adapt our rules. and. Tax rules are part of that system. And the last point, the initiative of proposing concrete um, new solutions, and we have to be a driving force in our um, talks with the OECD, but if we are the first continent in the world to have new tax rules in this area, then we are going to be a driving force. And our citizens expect from us that we show initiative and that we launch this new system. So, um, yeah, there is a last priority that is very important to me. Uh, Mr. Juncker, in his um, speech on the State of the Union, talked about a qualified majority in fiscal matters. That is something that I have been endorsed for a long time. I was a member of the European Parliament, a member of the French Parliament. I think this is a fundamental matter. We cannot make progress. We cannot achieve fiscal convergence um, or um, fiscal justice if we are paralyzed by the unanimity rule. And this is why we have to um, convert to the qualified majority rule. And I'm going to launch an initiative uh, at the beginning of 2019 in this respect. This is going to represent a big efficiency gain for the union because it will allow us to make more progress faster. And it will also allow us to adapt uh, our fiscal rules to the um, requirements of the time. Um, as a commissioner, I see that uh, unanimity is not a hurdle that cannot be overcome. Um, whenever there is a big scandal, then there is big pressure on the commission. You, as you know, members of the parliament, it's a big pressure also on governments. But it's, uh, unanimity can be very um, impairing if it's about the structural reform. And um, a corporate tax base um, for Europe is not really something that can be achieved very simply. What we want to make is democratic progress because uh, the qualified majority has always been um, a companion of progress made in our union. Uh, the Luxembourg Compromise um, does exist, it's true, but in fiscal matters, uh, it's not just that the willing the will of just one stakeholder could hinder everyone in the council to make process and um, the veto right um, makes it impossible for us to make progress in this matter so i know i wanted to show you that this is a very active commission and wants to respond to the expectations of the general public in its fight against tax evasion and tax fraud but whatever investment is made on the part of the Commission, and I think we've um, spent a great deal of resources on this um, uh, area, you as elected members of Parliament have an essential role to play in order to make sure that we have a level fiscal playing field. Your voters expect this from us. And it is your political weight that allows you to make a real impact on uh, um, urging your governments to impose the right rules. And I 
would like to also welcome efforts made by the European Parliament, and I see some of its members here in, this, in the room, also former members. And the European Parliament has a very active role to play in this dossier. They provide ideas and the pressure to obtain concrete results, that is something that works. Because there's very big convergence in the European Parliament in this subject matter and the national parliaments, and I was a member of a national parliament, um, also have a great deal of influence and I would like to encourage you to make maximum use of all the influence that you have on the public and on your governments. And I'm looking forward to the discussion today about the um, fiscal system of the European Union and I will of course be happy to respond to questions and to statements. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner, for this overview of measures planned and already on the way. I'd now like to hand over to State Secretary Hubert Fuchs. Um, I think uh, you were already present at the Tallinn conference as a member of the Finance Committee of the Austrian National Council, so this is not, forum is nothing new for you. You're right. In Tallinn, I was uh, a tax consultant and I was a member of the Austrian Parliament, and now, uh, since December 27, I am the State Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, so I can see both sides, which I think is a very good thing. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Vienna. Let me start with a short introduction concerning fair and efficient taxation. Tax fraud, profit shifting, and tax evasion practices take place right in the center of Europe. Austria loses up to 1 billion euros per year by tax avoidance practices. In recent years, Austria has therefore introduced numerous measures to react early to possible tax avoidance scenarios. By closing gaps at national level, Austria has taken over a leading role within the EU 28 in fighting against tax evasion. However, competing tax avoidance and unfair tax planning does not end at national borders. Therefore, EU member states need a joint strategy to ensure a level playing field. In view of globalization and new technologies, especially when it comes to taxation of the digital economy, we have to seek for global solutions. The Austrian presidency will attach particular importance to support potential solutions at EU as well as OECD level. Measures to combat tax evasion take place on a global level, on a EU level, and of course on a national level. Implemented international measures are the automatic exchange of information on finance account information and the country to country, country by country reporting. To the automatic exchange of information on financial account information. In order to combat tax fraud, tax evasion and aggressive tax planning, an automatic exchange of financial account information in tax matters was implemented on an international as well as EU level. Austria exchanges the full set of information for the year 27 in 2018. Country by country reporting. Complying with PEP section 13, large multinational companies have to report the allocation of incomes, taxes and businesses activities in the country by country reports. These reports are exchanged automatically among the countries concerned. Implemented national measures are the non-deductibility of interests and royalties. Since 2014, interests and royalties are not deductible if paid within a corporate group and taxed at a low rate or not taxed at all at the recipient. 
the tax rate is below 10%. Avoidance of double non-taxation of foreign profit distributions. In 2011, Austria introduced a provision to avoid potential double non-taxation of profit distributions from foreign to domestic corporations. Austria was the first member state to implement this recommendation of the Code of Conduct Group. And last, the register of beneficial owners. The register of beneficial owners serves as a helpful tool in the fight against money laundering and terrorist financing. Mr. Moscovici already talked about the digital economy, but let me make additional remarks. A common response to digitalization is indispensable since the current corporate tax system does not cover all areas of this new economy. Under the current rules, taxation is only possible if a company has a physical establishment in this country. As a, loose, as a solution, companies should have to declare a digital permanent establishment in case of a significant digital presence. Such a digital permanent establishment could be linked to domestic revenues. This would mean a shift from taxation where the physical presence is to where the value is created. According to the proposal on the digital service tax, the tax shall cover large companies that provide three types of digital services. Targeted online advertising, multi-sided digital interfaces, and the sale of user data. The taxation of the digital economy is a top priority of the Austrian presidency, while in the long term, the ultimate goal is of course a global solution at OECD level. The EU will focus on the digital service tax as an interim solution. The common corporate tax base. The fragmented corporate taxation systems across the EU28 support unfair tax competition practices. CCTP is the first step, helps to eliminate unfair tax competition and means a reduction of administrative burdens. This would create a level playing field within the international market and also protect the market from base erosion vis-a-vis -vis third countries. The proposal provides harmonized rules for the calculation of the corporate tax base for cooperation with an annual turnover over 750 million euros. Corporations below the threshold shall have the opportunity to opt in for the CCTP regime. The Austrian presidency sees the CCTP as a priority and intends to achieve substantial progress. At the moment, the member states are discussing the impact on national revenues. Concerning the loose list of non-cooperative jurisdictions, the overall aim of the, EU, of the EU list is a constructive and transparent dialogue with third countries in order to strengthen tax good governance and improve tax systems. Many countries have committed to comply with the agreed criteria and processes within an agreed timeline. The EU list also creates a stronger deterrent for non-compliant countries. The first EU list was established in December 27 and some sanctions already apply on listed jurisdictions. Further defensive measures in the tax area are still under consideration by the member states. The Code of Conduct Group will continue evaluating whether third countries deliver on their commitments within the given deadlines. Under the Austrian presidency, further coordinated measures and further criteria are being discussed. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Herr Thank you very much, State Secretary. I would now like to give the floor to my co-chair, Hans Michelbach, before we have a general discussion. Mr. Chairman, colleagues, 
I welcome the fact that the Austrian presidency has taken up the topic of taxation as one of its priorities. Um, the Panama Papers, the Paradise Papers, Lux Leaks, uh, those are uh, synonymous for aggressive tax planning and tax avoidance. It's not just uh, um, traders that avoid taxation, but there are also member states of the European Union that welcome such tax refugees, so to speak, because they expect advantages for their own countries. Tax rates were negotiated at a very low level. Um, profit shifting still takes place. It's common practice among numerous multinational groups. According to a study from June 2018, multinationals shift approximately 40 percent of their profits every year to low-tax countries through tax avoidance. Public budgets lose huge sums in the amount, in the magnitude of billions. That fraud, a carousel fraud, as was referred to by Commissioner Moscovici, is quite common. This is an attack against uh, the state under the rule of law, against the internal market of the European Union, and against the fundamental principles of our community. The fundamental understanding of a democratic society is that everyone has to contribute to the financing of um, the community according to their means. Tax avoidance is an attack against cohesion in the European European Union, it's fraud. It means distortion of competition at the expense of numerous local businesses, particularly local SMEs, because normally it's SMEs that pay their taxes in the country in which they are based according to the rule. Tax avoidance. Um, advances uh, populism uh, because centrifugal forces develop in that way. And I'm glad that the topic has been approached uh, in the European Union and the OECD, because if we want to succeed, we have to act together. I'd like to remind you of the BEPS initiative, which uh, Germany was significantly involved in under Federal Minister of Finance Wolfgang Schäuble. We have a system of automatic information exchange on tax matters. The system is operational by now, and it works well. There is a black list of non-cooperative uh, jurisdictions and tax havens, and it is uh, taking effect, and I'm grateful for any input that comes from the Commission. Currently, there are four important uh, fiscal policy tasks. First, disclosure of tax avoidance strategies by businesses and by intermediaries. Second, rules on the taxation of the big Internet companies like Google, Facebook, Apple, Amazon. They have to be taxed appropriately because otherwise distortion of competition will destroy the economic structures in the individual countries. Third, the common um, corporate tax base uh, has to be put on a broad basis. International tax competition 
of businesses certainly exists. We know that President Trump in the United States reformed the corporate tax system, and therefore there will be shifts from and relocations of companies from um, the European Union to other countries. We have to face up uh, uh, to this problem and agree on a common um, tax base. Third, measures have to be taken against uh, uh, tax avoidance and tax havens because uh, um, offenses have to be uh, fought against more vigorously. I think we have to be thorough rather than fast because it's in the interest of equality and fairness. A solution, however, has to be found quickly. A common, finding a com agreeing on a common uh, tax assessment base is easy, is more difficult than it sounds. Let me refer to the specific issue of trade tax in Germany. Germany, uniform tax rates and a minimum tax rate uh, would not be meaningful if we want to reach a common consolidate a common consolidated tax assessment base we would be strengthening the European Union as an economic region. And I think that country-by-country country reporting is a solution to be welcomed. But it should only be uh, disclosed to the tax authorities. Publication in general would not be meaningful. I think we have to be reasonable in our approach. Last but not least, I'm grateful for the opportunity to take up the task of working on taxation within the European Union, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Michelbach. And with this, we take up our discussion. In view of the large number of speakers who have asked for the floor, I have to shorten uh, the speaking time to 2.5 minutes. The first request for the floor from Margarita Marquez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I would like to thank you for last night uh, for the opportunity you provided for us to uh, have a cultural experience. I'd also like to thank the three speakers on, who contributed a great deal to this important topic. Pierre Moscovici, you presented uh, the list of political decisions by the European Union uh, taken recently, and you also recalled the proposals which the Commission presented, but which the Council has not yet adopted, and you reminded us of the um, issue of unanimity and its limits. This is important when we talk about fighting against tax fraud and tax evasion. Um, when we um, move from unanimity to uh, uh, qualified majority voting, we understand how important this is and how important the role of the European Parliament and national parliaments is. I have a specific question. We are aware of the work done by the Commission, by the Council, by OECD, and my question is the following. It's not enough to list what has been decided, we have to understand the impact of these policies. And therefore, Mr. Commissioner, I would ask you if in your final contribution you could give us an evaluation of the impact of the measures taken against money laundering, against terrorist financing, against 
um, the uh, relocation of uh, companies within the internal markets to countries that have unfair tax policies. Uh, perhaps you could give us a positive evaluation of the mandate of this commission in this respect. Thank you very much. Uh, Gostana Peric is the next speaker. Dear colleagues, uh, dear Mr. President and the last uh, three uh, speakers, so uh, I'll uh, speak about uh, Croatia. One of the most common reasons for tax paying resistance is the tax burden. For the last three years, the general tax burden has been reduced in the Republic, uh, Republic of Croatia. Tax evasion in Croatia occurs in three different forms, namely income tax evasion, VAT tax evasion, and the corporation tax evasion. Income tax evasion is carried out through moonlighting and cash payment or employing workers at a minimum wage pay paging, uh, pay uh, paying the balance of their wages in cash. From the beginning of 2018, Income is taxed at a rate of 24 and 36%, unlike the previous 12, 25, and 40%, and the personal deduction is increased to uh, 3,800 uh, Croatian kuna. Mm -hmm. According to the estimates of the Ministry of Finance, personal income tax cuts have excluded about 1.5 million people. Although the tax burden is reduced, income tax evasion may also be linked to the contributions that both worker and employer feel as a burden which they are trying to avoid. VAT is a uh, indirect ta uh, tax that uh, the taxpayers shift to consumers. However, despite these characteristics, there is an interest in, uh, in avoiding the tax liability that is providing additional economic benefits for the amount of tax paid by the consumer. In the case of value added tax, tax evasion is done by not issu issuing the invoices or through false invoicing. Mostly, it takes place in services, in service activities and trade. In general, in activities where uh, the turnover is mostly done in cash. With the introduction of the fiscal system, the trend of increasing VAT revenues is notable. According to Eurostat data, the Republic of, Cre Republic of Croatia is the leader in the share of VAT revenues in GDP, about 38%. So in the Republic of Croatia, there is a development of the tax system and thus the space for reducing tax and tax base for the corporate tax decreases. So thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeppe Kofort. Uh, also, for, for my part, I want to commend uh, the host for organizing this debate. I think it's uh, very important in Europe. We have debate between national parliaments, European Parliament, Commission, and Council on this issue. We have too few of these type of debates where we're all together and have the same analysis, share the same analysis. And to me, uh, talking about corporate taxations first, I mean, we are all seeing the benefit of our single market in Europe, the biggest in the world, but we also know what the cost of non-Europe is in taxation. Uh, in corporate taxation in, in our own single market, we lose uh, around 50 to 70 billion in corporate taxes because we don't have an efficient system. Uh, and I think in our market, we uh, should value uh, ideas, uh, innovation, and so on. We should not value the companies who dot taxes. It's really a wrong incentive, so we need to get rid of this. And that's what we, why we're here today, I think, in my opinion. So I support very much, and I think we should have uh, the CCCTB uh, and, uh, and also, uh, of course, in, on the council side, we need transparency, uh, and we need to adopt the country by country reporting public country by country reporting, so we can also hold the big corporations accountable. We also see that small and medium-sized enterprises now have a tax burden in the EU, 30% higher. That kills jobs, kills growth, kills innovation. We need to clean up that mess. Um, I want to say um, that um, we need, uh, as also the commissioner said, 
we need to uh, have a, a tax corporate tax system that fits for the 21st century. Both in Europe, we could be the role model of the world, but also globally. So I'm happy that we now have the uh, uh, list of non-cooperative jurisdictions outside EU, but we need real sanctions against the ones who do not comply. And I want to ask you what type of sanctions we could impose. And finally, I have to say, both on the uh, financial stability uh, in our union, um, we have uh, recently seen warnings also from Katainen that money laundering, for example, through our banks, through our financial institutions, they are a risk to our financial stability. We need much tougher uh, actions against money laundering. Uh, we see national authorities, uh, banks are not living up to the law. What can we do effectively on the European scale to stop this kind of financial crimes, which is uh, also crimes to our citizens who obey the law? Thank you so much. Thank you. Michael Teure. Thank you, Chair, colleagues. In our work in the European Parliament, uh, Elisa, as co-reporter, re rapporteur, we investigated the Lux Leaks affair, and one of the central findings of reports one and two was that the combination of 28 different tax systems necessarily creates loopholes which are being used by multinational companies um, to reduce their corporate tax burden almost to zero. And this leads to distortions of competition at the expense of small and medium-sized companies. Therefore, this has to be prevented in an internal market with freedom of movement of capital. We have to have a play level playing field for all. Through the automatic exchange of information, we've already taken a big step forward. Have we reached our goal yet? as regards uh, cross-border audits. I think more needs to be done there. The uh, consolidated common corporate tax base is not making progress. Issues are very complicated. Therefore, my question to Commissioner Moscovici, do you think that a solution can be found within a reasonable period of time? And then there is something we are doing in the European Union. That refers to the question of the international uh, embedding of the BEPS uh, process. Um, Two billion dollar U.S. companies um, are repatriating their money to the United States in order to avoid taxation. Shouldn't we think about replacing corporate taxation by an entirely different system of taxation? In the 1960s, many shipping companies flagged their ships not under European countries' flags. And within the framework of digitalization, more and more Big multinationals operate under other jurisdictions except for the SMEs that remain in their countries. So shouldn't we replace corporate taxation by a different taxation system? OECD is pointing out the fact that tax systems with simple rules and low tax rates contribute towards the avoidance of tax evasion. Thank you very much. So many leaks, offshore leaks, paradise papers, and so on. This clearly shows that, uh, that we have two different types of enforcements, one for those who evade taxation and one for other citizens. And there is one for transnational companies and one for local companies. It's a double reality that undermines not only confidence in the state and the operability of the political system, but it also promotes uh, uh, the emergence of right-wing populism. And it's due to these leaks that in the fight against tax evasion and money laundering, progress uh, has been made. I'm referring to the International Exchange of Information on Financial Accounts Agreement on the BEPS measure 
measures and the implementation of ATED 1 and ATED 2, the introduction of transparency registers for beneficial owners and trusts, the automatic exchange of tax filings, and so on. But a great deal in this area has remained incomplete. Um, Fine-tuning and corrections will be necessary, particularly with regard to transparency. I'd like to mention country-by-country country reporting. Commissioner, you said that it's publicly accessible, but this is not the case, at least not in Austria. The same holds for the transparency registers. And the black list of tax havens also has to be uh, corrected. Uh, a country, w a list without European countries, without the United States, and without sanctions is just not enough. But we also need improvements in the field of digital taxation. Austria did make an attempt, and the proposal uh, failed, may, uh, submitted by the Commission, failed at the ECOFIN uh, meeting in Austria. That would be a first step. But we also need effective protection. We need harmonized corporate taxes, and we need minimum tax rates. In this context, you mentioned the possibility of a proposal of uh, giving up the unanimity principle. I would greatly welcome such a change. Uh, what do you think the chances are now that Great Britain is going to leave uh, the uh, European Union? Because Great Britain was always strictly against giving up unanimity. Thank you very much. Duarte <laughs> Pacheco. Dear colleagues, Good morning. Uh, to combat uh, tax evasion is a, a duty to all of us politicians. And in my country, during the last 15 years, we have done a lot on it. For instance, we changed laws, we, we have the criminalization of tax evasion, and we invest a lot at uh, IT. But uh, as, a, and, uh, as a parliamentarians, we know our rule. For instance, the government needs to present every year a report about uh, tax evasion. And tomorrow, the Secretary of Finance uh, will be at the Parliament, at the Budget Committee, to present a report and to answer the questions of MPs. So we know what, how we should, what we should do, and we are doing our job. But we need to say also something. To, pay, to have a real combat to tax evasion, People need to feel that the system is fair. And uh, we are not living in the fair continent. I need to say that. Our, our, as our colleague from German said a few seconds, seconds ago, people feel that big companies change their headquarters just to have planning, fiscal planning, and to avoid pay taxation. But the small ones, are not available to do that. And so the temptation to escape the fiscal obligations is very, very big. And that's why I think if we need, if we have, if we should have an internal uh, market, we should have an harmonization at, at least a tax corporation. And what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Thank you. Christos Staikouras has the floor. Thank you, Chairman. As Europeans, we should agree that the tax system should be governed by the core principles of transparency, neutrality, simplicity, stability, functionality, balance and fairness, aiming at enhancing growth. Unfortunately, over time and cross-country, Obstacles are emerging, fueling tax fraud and tax avoidance. Thus, to tackle these issues, the implementation of, of, a, of a coherent policy framework through independent tax authorities is necessary, with actions such as the creation 
of a single, more flexible and simplified European VAT area, as the Commissioner mentioned, however, with lower tax rates. For example, the European Commission indicates that the VAT gap, thus the tax evasion on VAT, reached its lowest level in Greece in 2014, when specific tax rates were reduced. The enhancement of the cooperation and the harmonization of tax frameworks at European level, especially for corporate tax systems, restricting competitive disadvantages for several EU countries. For example, it cannot be tolerable to tax labor heavily through huge increases in insurance contributions, which boosts brain drain and increases tax avoidance. The enhancement of the automatic exchange of information, especially on financial accounts, tax rulings and country-by-country -country reporting to cope swiftly and more efficient with cross-border tax evasion. The creation of a stricter and more effective framework for dealing with tax havens that encourage abusive tax practices. The implementation of the minimum standard measures arising from the base erosion and profit shifting program concerning particularly sensitive areas such as tracking down transfer pricing transformations, improving dispute resolution mechanism, preventing contract abuse and fostering fiscal transparency. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Thank you very much. Alberic de Montgolfier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pierre Moscovici spoke about two important proposals, the fight against uh, cross-border TVA fraud and the fight against uh, uh, tax evasion by the multinational companies. I'd like to mention a priority which hasn't been referred to yet, the fight against TVA fraud in e-commerce. It's a kind of fraud. Uh, uh, which is uh, being uh, um, uh, overlooked to a certain extent, uh, but you find numerous traders who do not even list their VAT number. Um, this confirms the massive character of this type of fraud, which the European Commission should take up. There are two possible solutions adopted by France. It's not a solution yet uh, in the United Kingdom. It would be creating a, a platform for trade on the basis of responsibility and solidarity, a platform for e-commerce. And I think uh, my question is, is this provided for in community law? And then uh, a type of payment someone buys at uh, something at a um, e-commerce site, and where is the value-added tax uh, paid? If it's a site, um, in Italy, for example, and it's something that hasn't been taken up by the Commission yet, but it would be a means of fighting against VAT fraud. And uh, it's something that the French Senate has taken up, and I think it's a problem that is evolving continuously in the field of e-com. Christian Petri, bitte. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, Chair, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, I think it's very important to underline that the objective of harmonization or the closing of loopholes and the common tax base should be aimed at not further widening the gap between taxation of labor and taxation of capital. I think this would be an important contribution um, 
and this would be well accepted by the population if a taxation of labor and taxation of capital were not moving uh, farther apart. Uh, the measures regarding transparency exchanges, data exchanges, and uh, the assessment basis are extremely important to avoid loopholes. We know that the European Union is not alone. Tax systems in the United States were already referred to, but also in China and Russia. This is something we should not lose sight of because they do cause problems for us. The uh, common consolidated corporate tax base is something very important, but it's also important uh, to bear the range of tax rates in mind, because a common base will not help if you have a range from zero to 100. And Mr. Michelbach mentioned already the specificities of the individual types of tax to be taken into account, besides corporate tax. Um, personal income tax and VAT have to be taken into account in the uh, fight against tax avoidance and against abuse. This should be borne in mind, both in Europe and outside Europe. Legal and technical measures will have to be taken to close these loopholes. My last sentence on this, the digital tax was mentioned. Uh, the uh, tax base is becoming larger, and therefore my question uh, to the gentleman on the podium, who is going to get the additional tax revenue for the financing of the European Union, for the countries, or for the local authorities? Local authorities also need to be properly equipped in all countries. Thank you very much. Igor Pimenovs. Okay, good morning. Uh, addressing Mr. Moscovici. Mr. Commissioner, uh, may I ask some questions concerning a little bit different topic rather than tax evasion to you, namely a simplification of fiscal rules as it is within your competence. Unfortunately, I did not receive responses yesterday. Uh, following an opinion of the Economic and Financial Committee published on the 29th of November 2016, the Commission's assessment of compliance with fiscal rules now focuses more on the expenditure rule, which has the particular advantage that government spending can generally be better planned and managed than government revenue. So will the simplification uh, result in amendments of fiscal discipline regulation in this case? Second, what is your opinion? Uh, would it be reasonable to calculate potential growth and thus the structural deficit basing on a considerably longer time gap than the two years, which is used now. And third, can the flexibility of the Stability and Growth Pact be extended, in particular by exempting national co-financing of EU structural and investment funds programs from deficit calculations? Is it reasonable, in your opinion? Thank you so much. Thank you. Eric van Rompuy. I'm a member of the Belgian Parliament, and I was also part of our um, investigations on the Panama Papers. And the conclusion of the Belgian Parliament was that there is total powerlessness at national level. And this is why I'm so happy about the activities of the European Commission, um, thanks to Mr. Uh, Moscovici, who is responsible for this subject. And it's very important for public opinion to combat fiscal um, evasion. And concrete progress has been made. And I have been observing this matter for years. But now we've really made progress when it comes to the exchange of information, the country by country reporting. Um, tangible activities against money laundering, um, aggressive tax planning at the European level, like BEPS, also the fight against the VAT fraud. So I would like to um, um, 
also tie in with the questions that we has been asked about e-commerce, because there seems to be a really large potential for fraud. And LuxLeaks and Panama Papers, um, uh, uh, the tax havens, now we have a list of nine countries, but there are 65 on the gray list, so really we have to advance here as well, because it's not really credible to say that only nine countries are tax havens. There are also tax havens in Europe, and we really have to do something against that. I have two questions. First on uh, digital uh, tax economy, Mr. Moskowitzki, you said in ECOFIN talked about that some weeks ago. It's not acceptable that multinationals pay hardly any tax when they have activities everywhere in the world, so we need to find a system. So my question is, the traditional way of taxing enterprises, namely profit taxing, could, can that really solve the problem? Uh, and can that provide the just system? Uh, or do we have to really remodel all our systems? Uh, because physical presence is something that is important, but in a digital world with so many possibilities of exchanges and changes, don't we have to somehow really revamp our system um, of corporate taxation? And the last question, there is really a, a downwards competition when it comes to taxes. All the countries um, lower their corporate taxes. So this, this race to the bottom, uh, that's not really good for public finances. And finally, uh, companies ha uh, benefit in certain countries and not in others. So I think uh, this is something that really harms our single market because comp competitiveness between companies is uh, distorted by that. So we really need a common tax base. Thank you very much, Mr. Van Rompuy. Next speaker, Dimitrios Matas. Dear Chairman, thank you very much. Out of Panama Papers and all other related areas, there are things uh, which are referring to the everyday life. More precisely, if you want to reduce tax evasion, you could make the following. Apply VIES mechanism in the frame of the intra-EC trade on daily level and not on monthly level. This means that firms acting at intra-EC trade have to fulfill and then to send the appropriate document, the intra-strategic document, on daily level and not on month level. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hari Askari. You what is very, very important in every national parliament, of course, think of thinking about the, how much we can collect tax. I, I think that the common VAT tax sounds, uh, I think, relatively good, that finally you pay in that country where you actually consume the product or, or the service. So it is targeted in the right way. But then, at the same time, when we are starting to talk about the corporate tax, it's much more complex. Uh, and uh, then we can really ask that and during the digital time, where is the home base of the, of the company? Which is the country, uh, where is the home base? And I understand if the company base is in the third country, but, and it is not paying any kind of tax to EU countries. But what, what is happening when it is in, uh, let's say, a small EU country where it creates its value, and, and at the same time the market is in the very much bigger EU country, who is going to collect uh, the corporate tax in that way, where the value is actually added? in that small creative country or in the country where there are most of the customers. 
Thank you, Yanis Mukans. Honorable Chair, dear colleagues, I will speak about the tax situation in Latvia. Uh, tax evasion and VAT fraud is actual issue for the Ministry of Finance of Latvia, the State Revenue Service, other institutions, including Parliament as well. Government institutions are working on these issues because tax evasion and VAT fraud make significant financial losses for the state and munic municipal budgets, affecting tax revenues, national economy and social welfare, as well as education, medicine and other sectors. The aim of our government action plan is to reach the tax revenue amount as one third from the GDP in 2020. Currently, in 2018, the total amount of tax revenue in Latvia is close to 30% of GDP. However, the shadow economy still leads to significant losses in revenues. The main types of taxes which are the reason for the significant tax gaps in Latvia because of tax evasion and fraud are mandatory state social insurance contributions, VAT and personal income tax. These tax gaps have been analyzed to estimate the extent of tax avoidance and manage tax-related risks. According to the State Revenue Service information in 2014-2016, the size of tax gaps in comparison with the previous year decreased by 2.4% uh, for personal income tax, by 2.6% for mandatory state social insurance contributions, and by 4.1% for VAT. Analysis of statistical data shows that bigger tax gaps in Latvia are quite characteristic for construction business, trade, catering and some other sectors of the economy. To effectively combat tax evasion and fraud, the State Revenue Service in Latvia continuously performs preventive tax control measures and taxpayer education measures. Uh, performing uh, active control measures, the State Revenue Service pays particular attention uh, to the most risky entrepreneurs as well. Due to preventive and control measures, the extent of tax evasion and VAT fraud decreases. However, it should be noted that important role in combating of tax evasion and VAT fraud is of a general mood of society and its uh, participation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Patrice Joly. Chairman, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking here about a topic that is worth many billions of euros, according to estimates. Fraud um, based on the opportunities offered by tax havens, and according to some analysis, uh, it also uh, is due to um, a mismatch of taxation system in within Europe. The stakes are big um, in the EU and in every member state. So uh, we see pro progressive uh, dismantling of social cohesion. And uh, the main reason is this inequality, this um, unjust situation, and this fiscal dumping that is sometimes added to social dumping. Adapting the fiscal systems at the European level that was proposed by the first speakers is um, essential. Uh, a consolidated corporate tax base, uh, digital um, taxation, and also, now we the next um, elections to the European Parliament um, ahead, and we are, we are seeing very different interests and situations in the individual member states, and given the e economic uh, weight of the individual um, countries, I think it's the women who have um, a remarkable power to shift the situation at the, in the elections. Then the tax on digital services, which um, uh, is um, proposed, 20 billion, that is more or less the European budget for 21 to 26, and it would be, uh, it would fund um, policy areas that would otherwise tend to be ignored, particularly um, policies on uh, peripheral uh, regions, rural regions, 
uh, with um, uh, the GAP the reductions that are oncoming, and uh, uh, the, we need more solidarity for those regions. Thank you, Georgi Thank you, Georgi Perinsky. Thank you, President. My question is to Commissioner Moscovici and it concerns the financial transaction tax. Commissioner, you mentioned the necessity of taxing multinationals in the proper way, of taxing uh, the digital sector. Other new types of taxation were discussed. Financial transaction tax is not a new idea, of course. But it acquired, I believe, new urgency in the light of 2008 and what happened after that in the way of bailouts, etc. These days we read that at 10, uh, 10 years after what happened uh, 10 years ago, again, what is known as animal spirits are gaining ground in the financial uh, economy. Fisc uh, financialization seems to be one of the principal characteristics of this new 21st century economy that we are talking about. And uh, my question to you is, uh, first of all, would you care to tell us uh, why this not new idea has not come to fruition so far? What have been the stumbling blocks? Number two, is the commission ready to re-examine the whole range of issues having to do with the financial transaction tax idea? Are you personally ready to become the champion of the cause of FTT? Thank you. Thank you, Ros Simon Suskind. Thank you, Ros Simon Suskind. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chair. My question goes to Mr. Moscovici. Um, your proposals of um, adopting the qualified majority rule I found very intriguing. Since I know how difficult it sometimes is among all the member states, how do you um, imagine to do that in practice? Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Lolita Tsigane. Thank you so much, Chair. I would really like to second the opinions of uh, those colleagues who said that uh, due to tax evasion and uh, tax avoidance, uh, they are not only budgets that are being hurt. It is actually the fundamental principle of fairness that is being hurt. And of course, many of the colleagues and also speakers mentioned that uh, particularly small and medium-sized companies are being hurt because they cannot reallocate and they have to comply with the full tax regime, while big corporations just find a better place for paying taxes. And this is really eroding uh, the belief of the communities in uh, responsible entrepreneurship in general fairness. And I do want to make that connection with populism that several of the previous speakers made in this regard. This fosters conspiracy ideas of elite conspiracies against the people and so on and so forth. Therefore, I really believe that these concepts of fairness and special focus on small and medium-sized SMEs have to play a central role. And this also refers to an issue that the EU has been discussing for quite a long time, that of youth unemployment. Unfortunately, a lot of young people who start their first trials in entrepreneurship are scared away by heavy tax burdens, by heavy tax regimes. And they very likely join big corporations which have aggressive tax planning practices, but that shield their employees from everyday struggles uh, with how to pay their taxes. For this reason, I would like to ask a question to Commissioner Moscovici. Uh, what exactly do you propose should be done to bring SMEs in the focus, and specifically those ones created by younger generation Europeans? Thank you. Thank you very much. So the list of speakers is closed. Thank you for all your contributions. Mr. Commissioner, you've been addressed in many statements and questions, and uh, you have a very tight schedule and have to leave us very soon, so I would ask you to respond first. Thank you very much, Chairman. Yes. If, Actually, I do have to leave very soon, 
but thank you very much for this very open and constructive um, contributions to the discussion. The Commission uh, appreciates these exchanges with the parliamentarians. There's always a big influx of new information, and you, as I said, are big stakeholders in our big project. Um, and despite um, different political sensibilities, I can feel that there is a big sense of um, general agreement. Uh, we are making progress in this fight, which is a truly European fight, and uh, when it comes to the questions, the first on the impact of the measures that have been adopted. The Commission has taken many measures. Uh, I've just singled out a few in my um, statement. Um, uh, this, they were uh, adopted very quickly, despite the unanimity principle, uh, because of the big scandals. In the area of transparency, um, the anti-fraud um, directive is going to enter into force next year. So um, various companies have already anticipated the effects of new rules and have already adapted their systems in order to avoid being persecuted. So I'm very hopeful about the good impact. And on the blacklist, uh, yes, I know it has its limits, but you have to think that this is a process that has moved a lot. I think it's an ongoing dialogue that allows to adaptations and adjustments to be made. Um, uh, we now have only uh, 65 on the gray and nine on the blacklist, um, and it was a much higher number before that. And then uh, when it comes to CCCTB, thank you for your statements and questions, because this reform, I think, is one of the most important things for the 21st century. I would like to thank the Austrian presidency for um, helping us uh, bring forward uh, this um, area in this half year. We really had to adjust this obsolete system that was no longer up to standards. Now, the country by country report, uh, I didn't say it was a public. I said I would like to see it public. It's a proposal by the Commission which has not yet been um, adopted and is not to the liking of every member state. But um, if you would like it, then I would encourage you to mobilize public opinion for that. And I see no contradiction between transparency and competitiveness. ECOFIN um, was not conclusive on that. It was an informal council. But uh, when it came to the taxation of the digital economy, it was very um, fruitful. I'm more optimistic now than when I started. I feel that there are favorable changes um, underway that will allow us to um, put, the, par, put the right priorities um, on the agenda of the OECD. And I think that with all the energy that and all the resources that we invest in that topic, we will come to um, a new tax system in the short term. Uh, for the digital economy, it's going to take a little longer, but I'm sure that um, all work is going to progress rapidly. Now, expenditure benchmark on public uh, spending. We do have such an assessment for our recommend country, country by country um, rules. But we, we have to be ambitious. We cannot at the same time be simple and uh, intelligent. So we will have to have to reform our rules. The Commission is ready to do that. But it, uh, that means we have to be even more flexible. I'm often criticized to be too um, flexible. Um, it was necessary because um, it has allowed us to um, come up with more intelligent solutions. But I never um, wanted to, um, to go any further than we have gone. And then uh, one on the uh, FTT, financial transaction tax. Yes, it's a proposal for um, strengthening cooperation uh, among the countries, uh, um, because that is sometimes a bit difficult. And 
I think this needs to be relaunched. And if uh, these countries could um, adopt such a financial transaction tax between them, uh, there are of these are, of course, four very large um, economies, uh, Germany, France, uh, Spain, and Italy. And I've noted down everything that was said about uh, 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 um, tax fraud. I don't think that the Commission has already exhausted all its resources, but uh, it would not be reasonable to, uh, to do much at this point in time. Uh, what, what has to be um, ensured is that at the end of our mandate, we have made progress on the fight against tax fraud, on VAT fraud, and on anything that is related to these topics. And if that is the case, I think we have worked for the public. This is, you, you are politicians, you are policy makers. Uh, yes, we are all parts of different political parties. Everyone has his or her convictions, but there's the, a question. Uh, is Europe working? Does Europe deliver the goods? And I think when it comes to taxation, that is a, a real um, test case. With Europe, we can make progress. Without Europe, we cannot. So in the various areas that I talked about, I think we have made progress, and I think we contribute to ensuring, reassuring uh, the citizens. And this is uh, what I would like to see. I'm very sorry to have to leave you early, but I was very happy to be here and to see, to have, to get a sense of um, a real um, sense of convergence among the opinions represented here in the room. Thank you very much. <laughs> Commissioner, thank you very much also for uh, responding to various questions. Thank you very much for joining us. We know that you have a number of important appointments here in Vienna before you return home. So thank you very much. And Mr. Fuchs. Thank you very much, Chairman. Well, two comments, two substantial comments. First of all, on the um, um, CCCTB, I share your opinion that this uh, CCCTB needs to be linked to a minimum tax rate in order to avoid a race to the bottom. And, and then the country by country reporting, I'm happy to see that Commissioner Moscovici uh, would like to uh, have this made public. I believe that sometimes it, we need public pressure for multinationals to um, pay the taxes where they actually generate their profits and not in the places where they find low tax rates. The European Commission is already calling, has been calling for public country-by-country country reporting since 2016. The European Parliament endorsed this, and I think uh, this would absolutely foster transparency. When we hear that 40 percent of the um, large multinationals uh, shift their profits to low-tax jurisdictions, that um, should really give us um, food for thought. Tax fraud is fraud. Um, it means defrauding the state and the public. Uh, so what we need to create is a fairness, a level playing field, and we have to tax fraud massively impacts the uh, capacities of the public authorities to act. And uh, this, the fight against this is the duty of every politician. Thank you very much, State Secretary. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, colleagues. I think we've had a very interesting discussion, and the tasks before us, if we want to create fair taxation within the European Union, is something that uh, was endorsed by all speakers, 
I'd like to thank you for that. For me, it's a special experience to see such agreement and uh, convergence among all colleagues uh, from the countries of Europe. The issue of fair taxation, the fight against uh, tax fraud, tax avoidance, and tax dumping appears to be in the interest of all countries uh, represented here. And uh, this gives me hope uh, that we are going to make progress in this respect. Many of the colleagues who spoke uh, referred to, uh, to taxation of digital companies, digital service providers. I think it's our task to act quickly and to find a solution as quickly as possible. Therefore, I'd like to come back to this topic before I conclude. On the part of the Commission, a long-term solution and a short-term solution um, have been put on the table. In the long-term solution, the issue of uh, the permanent establishment is to be enlarged to include a digital presence. This is mentioned in the proposal and referred to under certain conditions. If uh, income of at least 7 million euro is earned from the provision of digital services, or if there are more than 100,000 users of such digital services and a conclusion of at least 3,000 contracts on digital services. These are the criteria which are met by numerous companies, including um, SMEs, medium-sized providers. I think such a long-term agreement is not the solution we are looking for now. We should give preference to a short-term solution because centrifugal forces in Europe would become too strong and we would be blamed for not doing our job as uh, politicians working in the field of taxation. Therefore, I think the introduction of a digital tax should happen as quickly as possible, taxing uh, income from activities uh, um, such as the sale of online advertising space, digital intermediation, um, activities that allow users to interact with other users and that make the sale of services possible. That is, uh, income from the sale of data generated from user information. For the time being, the proposal is that a total income of at least 750 50 million euro and uh, EU in wide income of at least um, 50 billion euro are to be used as uh, a threshold. These figures are controversial. Uh, Denmark, and the Netherlands, and Malta have uh, um, issued a subsidiarity complaint in this respect. Of course, we can talk about figures. Figures can be negotiated, but the figures should not be too low. And uh, 750 million or uh, 50 million shouldn't be reduced too much because SMEs would be suffering from a burden before long. And what we really want is tax the big players on the Internet platforms. In Munich, for example, Alibaba has set up an establishment with a staff of 12 people, and they've already generated billions of revenues on the platform, which were never taxed. So I think we have to get hold of the big ones uh, that uh, uh, 
create value on site, but uh, transfer it to other countries, to other locations. And I think there is general agreement on that, which I'd like to thank you for. I hope that at European level, we can commit ourselves to a short-term solution before long. Thank you, Hans Mittelbach. Thank you, State Secretary Fuchs. Ladies and gentlemen, before we take our coffee break, I'd like to make a few concluding remarks. Once again, within the framework of this conference, it has become clear that uh, there is a common objective which we're all pursuing, combating tax evasion. Uh, the Commissioner spoke about fiscal policy convergence, which demands uh, fairness of taxation. At the same time, of course, the member states are sovereign in terms of taxation, and the European Union only has limited powers in this respect. So I greatly welcome the fact that the Commissioner said that together with the member states uh, and uh, both uh, Austria in particular as the country uh, having the presidency of the European Union will be working on the proposals already on the table and focus on the implementation and enforcements of instruments we have already, instead of talking continuously about what else could be done. We already have enough which needs to be implemented. So let us work on that together, because we don't want the good and honest ones, the fair ones, to bear the burden of financing the common will, which is necessary, while others do not meet their obligations. This should be our common concern. We're now